Welcome to another episode of Bone Talks. Today, we'll be discussing finger tip and nail bed injuries, also known as tough fractures. Our disclaimer is that this video is for educational purposes only. Watching is not a substitute for seeing a doctor. If you're concerned about a medical condition, call your doctor or call 911. We're not responsible for delays or damages in care because this is not medical advice. Again, it's for, me for medical education. So, what is a fingertip injury? An injury to the fingertip is not uncommon because our fingers are always reaching out into the world to participate in the day's activities. At some point in everyone's life, one of our fingers has gotten whacked by a door or crushed in a window. And this talk looks at the most common injuries that your fingertip can sustain after getting squished. On the left is a happy finger. In the middle is a finger that just got squished by a door. The mildest injury to a finger is a collection of blood under the nail, called a subungual hematoma. The nail is normally attached to the underlying skin. The skin is called the sterile matrix, and this supports the nail. But an injury can separate this attachment, causing bleeding under the nail. Sometimes there's just a small amount of blood under the nail, and this will get reabsorbed by our body in a few weeks. Sometimes the nail does die over the following few days, but it almost always is replaced by a new nail. As long as the pain isn't getting progressively worse, the best thing to do is leave the finger alone and protect it for a few days until it feels better. However, in some cases a lot of blood will collect under the nail. This leads to increasing pressure and a very painful finger. A procedure called trepanation, where a needle is used to poke a hole in the nail to allow blood to exit, is a good treatment option. It should be done under sterile conditions by a doctor to prevent bacteria from being introduced to the nail by the needle, possibly causing an infection. On the left is another happy nail. This time the finger got crushed with more force, causing the nail to be torn off the finger. When the nail is torn off, the underlying nail bed, remember it's called the sterile matrix, is off, often torn as well. The skin must be repaired using a very thin suture. The suture slowly dissolves over the next few weeks as the skin heals, and this allows a new nail to grow over top of it. If the skin doesn't heal or heals with a big scar, it will prevent a new nail from growing on top, and the nail will actually grow around the scar, causing a split, and this is how this type of finger injury got the nickname a split nail deformity. The nail is dead once it comes off the finger by losing its attachment to the underlying skin. However, the de dead nail is usually cleaned and placed back onto the finger. And now, this sounds weird, right? Well, it's placed back under the skin at the base of the nail, and this is called the eponychial fold, because it splints this area open so that a new nail will grow. Without this splint, the base can scar down and prevent a new nail from growing. New nails grow from the germinal matrix located just under the eponychial fold. The middle finger shows a well-treated finger. You can see that the nail bed injury has been repaired with suture and that the finger is being splinted open with the old nail. This treatment will allow a healthy new nail to grow back in around one to three months. As the new nail grows in, it will push out this old nail. The most severe type of injury is when the fingertip is so strongly damaged that not only the nail or the nail bed, but also the bone underneath the tip of your finger are all damaged. This bone is called the distal phalanx, and this injury is called a tough fracture. These are treated the same as a nail bed injury. The underlying skin is repaired with dissolvable suture. The old nail is returned to its position after being cleaned, and in this case the old nail has a secondary function of acting as a splint to support the underlying broken bone as it heals. The finger is wrapped in gauze and splinted with an aluminum splint to further protect the nail and bone. Typically, after two weeks, x-rays are taken to make sure that the break is healing well and the finger can come out of the splint to prevent stiffness. Sometimes the bone doesn't heal completely because there's space between the bone fragments filled with scar tissue. This is called a fibrous non-union, but it's rarely painful and usually isn't noticed by the patient. So as long as it's not painful, then there's nothing further to do because a surgeon can't improve on someone with no pain. Overall, most of these fingertip injuries heal very well as long as they're treated correctly so the new nail grows back normally. Thank you for watching another episode of Bone Talks. For more info, go to our website, BoneTalks.com, or email us with questions at contact at BoneTalks.com. Thanks again.